Well, it's TSOT time, which uh, is the acronym for Talking Science on Trexone. It's Tuesday. Dr. Brad Tucker's here. Brad, welcome. How's it going? Good. Uh, happy three-day week for us here in Australia. That's right. Yeah, exactly. It's nothing like also having another holiday on Thursday to uh, really break <laughs> up the week that was already shortened. <laughs> it's absolutely... Yeah, I never realised that like much Australia likes their public holidays. I'm all for it, but you know. I was actually looking at the list, uh, and Queensland has the most over this Easter weekend. Uh, we've got every every day from Friday to Monday as a public holiday, which I think is brilliant. Nice. Oh, because it's Saturday a public holiday in Queensland. Yeah, it is, yes. Oh, okay. It's just a normal Saturday in Canberra, but all right, yeah. What does a normal Saturday in Canberra entail? Uh, like a public holiday because everyone's gone because <laughs> everything else is a holiday. You know, so no, none Usual. of the politicians are here, so it works. Well, it, it must make it very quiet then. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, hey, let's uh, jump into the headlines of the week. And uh, I believe that uh, a meteor shower has dug up some water on the moon. Yeah, you know, we've talked about this a bit about, you know, there being a lot of water and ice on the moon and uh, an interest of potential extracting it for mining and resources. Uh, and, you know, this was all led to by the discovery from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter when it went around the moon and it found, hey, there's a lot of ice or water ice in some of these old craters. Uh, and more recently, it's looked at where meteors and meteor showers have bombarded the moon. We're talking about only small ones, but still has revealed new craters. And again, in those new craters is water ice. Uh, and so it's really kind of turned the tide in saying how uh, abundant water ice is potentially on the moon for future space exploration. Now, samples of the lunar soil that uh, the Apollo astronauts recovered uh, was barren from of water. Uh, What's the difference here? Have we just gone, uh, have these meteorites gotten a little deeper into the soil? Yeah, exactly. Because that was always the thing is the Apollo rocks were always pretty dry and they are similar to the Earth rocks, but they didn't have water. Um, and so it looks like it's just really kind of underneath the surface and we haven't uh, dug deep into it until we've gotten there. None of the Apollo missions landed in craters for obvious reasons. Uh, so they never explored these areas uh, and they never explored this kind of new, newly not unearthed, I guess, unmooned uh, ground. Um, you know, you have to be you have to be appropriate when you're talking about your celestial body. Uh, and uh, so, I think it's just one of those things that now that we're able to explore it, we're, we're able to know it. So, this mission called uh, L Cross, I think it was La Crosse, where it shot a projectile into the moon um, to essentially create a new crater and study it in detail. Again, showed a similar thing that there's a lot of water ice underneath the surface. So I think it's just a matter of that. If we dig a little bit, we'll find it. Again, like Mars, actually, where there, we knew the ice caps of Mars, but when Curiosity and others started digging on Mars, found there's a lot of ice there to be found. And I guess the the most ice is going to be uh, on the side of the moon, not facing the Earth. Uh, so that could potentially be a, a colony uh, on the moon. We're not actually going to see it. Well, potentially, yeah. I mean, it, it looks fairly evenly common. The far side of the moon does get bombarded by meteors more, which for various reasons is, is quite important. Um, so, yeah, so it, it, that's also good for ex space exploration, though. Um, and, you know, the Chinese landed on the far side of the moon for look for sources of helium-3. You know, the critical component here is you can turn that ice into rocket fuel, and that's where it becomes quite useful. Um because, you know, hydrogen and oxygen makes up water and hydrogen and oxygen makes up rocket fuel. Uh, and it's a fairly simple process to convert it, but, you know, relatively speaking. Uh, and it, so <laughs> it's, it's a cool idea that, you know, we will see, I, I really am confident we'll see this buildup of activity around the moon in the not too distant future. And to get there, we're going to need uh, some rockets, which they're going to launch from Cape Canaveral. I'm getting really good at these segues uh, because our second story is about uh, the Crew Dragon from SpaceX. Some smoke happening. Yeah, so yeah, smoke on the water, so to speak. Um, <laughs> so they were supposed, literally, they saw smoke going that over the, the water. That was the segue I should have used. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> um, it was it was a static abort test of the Crew Dragon. So. Um, this is a capsule that's designed to take humans to the space station. In March, it carried a, a dummy to the space station, as we talked about, uh, and that was fully successful. Uh, and so this was a fairly normal test in the sense that it was an abort test to see can the capsule essentially jettison away from the rocket if the rest of the rocket goes wrong. The tests seemingly were going fine. Even SpaceX reported the initial tests were fine. And then in a later test, and there was a series of tests they were doing, there was an anomaly. 
no one's really said much other than that, but uh, there was photos of, of smork pouring out of Cape Canaveral. In fact, there was so much smoke in the way it came up, it was actually caught on um, weather radar. Like you actually see this plume of moisture coming out of Cape Canaveral going over the ocean. And, and so it was clearly a big thing. NASA, the administrator Jim Brennan has said that yes, something happened, we're looking into it. So no one has said really much of anything. Um, it, it did happen Saturday in, a, in, in the U.S., so Sunday in Australia here. So it's with Easter holidays and stuff, it's been a bit slow. But they've also, I think, purposely been tight-lipped about it. It is a little bit uncharacteristic for SpaceX and Elon Musk as well, isn't it? They're, they're, they're very public in, in what they in, in, yeah. in their missions. So to be really quiet um, it probably doesn't bode too well for this uh, for this static test fire. That's right. Yeah, I mean, SpaceX has kind of taken the NASA playbook and that getting the public on your side really gets you support and it's worked well. And even in some of their past failures, they've openly said something's happened. This is what we think is going wrong. We're looking into it. They've been really not really releasing any of these details. I mean, there's been unconfirmed reports that the capsule was lost. Um, but again, there is nothing to, to substantiate that. And so it is a bit uncharacteristic. As you said, it does seem to be that it was something pretty serious. And I think regardless of however minor or serious it is, it will um, be or spill trouble for NASA resuming human spaceflight from the US. It clearly is going to be delayed. Well, we'll have to wait and see and hopefully this week uh, we're going to we'll get some information and we'll, we'll know what's been happening. I, I guess one of the things they're looking into is whether uh, whether something happened because they were using the same vehicle that they sent up to the ISS. Yeah, it was the exact the exact same one and that clearly was fine so if it's a fact that there's a problem in its reusability that's a big issue you know there's so many different things here and two u.s astronauts were slated to go up at the end of mid to end july um on the first u.s launch from u.s soil which would have been a, a you know it was a big deal because it was slated to happen a few days after the festivities of the 50th anniversary of the moon landing from the same launch pad so you know there's a lot of pushing to make this happen and so it will be seen as pretty big setback and it could slip all the way to the end of the year early next year having said that though there was of course the catastrophic fire of apollo one and it was only about 18 months later that we landed on the moon so that's right i mean it, look, at the moment <laughs> it, i think it just depends on how quick they learn um and what it is and what can be rectified we saw this when the soyuz capsule um late last year i think in november had that failure where one of the rocket boosters failure and you know essentially that capsule did exactly what they were testing is the capsule jettisoned away quite rapidly um from the rocket to make the astronaut survive the soyuz was up in about five six weeks uh, again and those astronauts are now in space already um so you know it can be quick but i think they will be really cautious when it comes to human space flight especially with the private company i think it's always been the name of the game um, but we'll see to see what happens. Fantastic, Brad. Well, thanks as always for checking in with Talk and Science, and uh, we'll see you next week. Definitely.